Yo guys, what's up? Jay here from Mohawk Miniatures and welcome to my latest video on how to paint yellow. We're going to paint yellow two different ways. We're going to do it once on a shot jump dragster using the airbrush. We're going to do it once on a space marine helmet stripe using a paintbrush. And any time I can give you two tutorials doing the same thing two different ways, we're going to do it. Hopefully you guys will get a little bit more mileage from the video that way. Can't do everything with an airbrush after all. And some of you don't have airbrushes. Buy an airbrush. Uh, you also may have noticed that this is a little bit different. We don't normally put this into the video, but I've decided to do it to try and get a little bit more of a connection between me and you. Uh, and also, hopefully I'll be able to explain things a little bit better later on in the video as well. So every now and again, you'll see this come up and uh, hopefully it works. If you like it, leave a comment. If you don't, leave a comment. Either way, leave me a comment, just say hi, it's Friday, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. Don't forget as well to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and of course, hit the bell button as well, so you can always be notified for when new content goes up. Okay, so here we go, we've got a black undercoat for our yellow, nothing wrong with that whatsoever, it's all about how you treat it from that point onwards. Now we're going to start off with a clutch colour, you kind of need this, or something very similar to it at least to do this, it's Bogren Brown from P3, Games Workshop to do something that is ever so slightly similar. Uh, mix one to one with Flow Improver and just get a good solid coat of this all over your mini. Now you might need two coats, you might need three to get a very firm base coat of this, but it's worth putting the time in now to ensure that happens. This is it, once everything's been done, it's kind of a dark mustard yellow I guess, uh, it's that kind of dark ochre, but this is what you need to start everything off. Next step, we're taking some flash kits yellow, we're mixing that into our Bogren Brown, one to one in paint, then an equal amounts of flow improver, and we're starting our highlights. Now, I always start highlighting from the bottom part of the miniature, and we go downwards. So at the front here, on this kind of ram that we've got going on, we're highlighting the bottom part of that prime. What you want to do is leave the Bogren Brown just in the darker areas of the miniature at this stage. So you can see just in front of the uh, the rotating blades we've got there, there's a little bit of that brown in there, just getting that transition going across. Now I'm going to make all of this much punchier in a bit, but for now, this is just that initial base coat. And one of the reasons I like working with a black undercoat when painting yellow is that we get this really nice depth of shadows. We get a really good depth of field with everything that we've got going on. For instance, up here at the spoiler, we know we're going to get some really nice transitions by the time this is done. So again, with this first step, get a lot of the uh, the mini covered in this, leave just the shadows, just those little bits of recesses, those areas, those parts of transitions that you want to be darker with the bow green, but everything else gets a coat of this everywhere you can. So once it's done, you can see we've got some shadows. We've started off those uh, gradients here and there. Let's get to the next step though. We're taking some flash gits yellow on its own. This is worth just giving the pot a quick rinse out uh, with your airbrush, just to be sure you're only spraying flash gits yellow on this. Start working towards the more extreme ends of the highlights. So leave a very small amount of that transition color you've just put in there on, but otherwise get all of the brightest points hit with this. Working around things like the uh, the raised bonnet there, uh, around the, uh, the, the sigil, the icon, just be tidy with your airbrush. Don't worry too much if you end up going into the shadows because there's a step later on that help you correct that. But do obviously try and be as neat with this as you possibly can. By the time you've done that, you've got something that already looks pretty damn yellow, but we're gonna go one step further. Now we're taking some white ink. Now this is really, really important. A couple of things here are very important, in fact. The first one is thinning it. So we've got one part ink, two parts flow improver and one part water. So you've really got a very thin solution that you're spraying over your miniature at this point. This can make control a little bit difficult. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about airbrush brush control. Now when I say this, what I don't always mean is the amount of pressure that you're putting through your airbrush. So if you push down on the trigger, the uh, amount of airflow coming through, don't always mean that. What I really mean is how far back you pull your trigger. And you can see as we start putting in some spot highlights, some specular highlights here and there, I'm barely moving the trigger backwards using my thumb. So you can see this coat of white is taking a long time to build up and this is fine. It's going to give us a very diffuse edge to it. It's going to bring it all in really, really gradually, which is exactly what we want. So once you've got all of this, everyone on the mini, you want your highlights. It's going to look a little bit weird, but there is a reason for this. Let's get to see why now. So 
So what we've done here is we've added some white as a kind of value layer mid paint job to allow us to glaze our yellow over the top. This white is going to give us the absolute most yellow version of that flash kit. It's going to really pull it out and make it pop from a mile away. So this is the secret to achieving this effect. It does look weird when you go through the process, but by the time you've finished it, no one will know that this is what has happened. It does make your shadows look a little bit desaturated. And we started off with that black uh, undercoat to allow us to get that depth of shadow in there. But because it's now looking a little bit gray, despite not actually being gray, we need to fix that. And that's the next step. But this right here is what makes your yellow really, really stand out. And that's it guys, if you're on table 1 uh, and you just go and see your friend over at table 30 or whatever, you're still going to be able to see your army if you use this technique, it's super clutch. But now, let's deal with that desaturated set of recesses that we've got. We're taking some Troll Slayer Orange and we're turning this into a glaze through our airbrush with a 1 to 5 mix with Flow Improver. We start to put that into all of the areas where that Bogren Brown remains. Now don't wipe out the entire thing, just make sure you're hitting the deepest part of that recess. And that way, whilst there'll still be a very, very slight desaturated band in there, you won't see it at all. And by doing this, you get these really, really powerful transitions from orange all the way through to your absolute brightest possible version of that yellow. This is going to give you something that looks really dramatic and will really stand out from pretty much anything else on there. I'm going to speed this up, we'll show you how to do the orange all over, and have a quick chat about Patreon and Twitch. So if you're enjoying this video, don't forget you can tune in on Twitch four nights a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday from 9pm and Saturday mornings from 11am or times in GMT. You can ask questions and have them answered in real time. You can just have fun and join in with the community we've got there. And we have giveaways as well. You can win minis painted by me. This Jack Dragster, in fact, is one of those. Uh, and you can win gift vouchers to hobby stockists of your choice. If you'd like a written guide or like some extra video content, then you can join in on Patreon where every two weeks you get a brand new video exclusive to Patreon, and every single week you get a written guide all about how to do whatever it was we did in the previous video, whether it be a YouTube or Patreon video. So if you're someone that likes to have something written in front of you, like a full PDF, then that's the place for you. I'd also like to thank the following Patreons who've joined up recently. It's you guys that have enabled me to do this as a full-time job, rather than just some little hobby thing that I did in the background. So big thanks to The Drunk Mystic, Brett Ford, Zlatan Simatovic, Darren Gibbons, and Story. Cheers, guys. Here we go. So this is after we've done a stream of work on it. So we've blocked in some of the black, got the metallics done, a bit of a wash on there. It's making everything look a little bit more like it's going to look in its finished state. Now, we've done a load of airbrushing, and you guys know me. I like to airbrush a lot, but that's not the end product. We've got to get some recessed shades done. Now for this we're not using a wash product, we're using a mixture of Troll Slayer Orange and Flash Gits Yellow. This helps to bridge the gap between all of the airbrush work that we've done. We're making sure this gets into every single one of the recesses. We're making sure we hit all of things like the rivets and so on with this. We need to be sure that this is going to give us all of the detail back that airbrushing can lose. So we've gone around some of the sigils and the glyphs, we've done into all the recesses along the, um, like the side of it with the, the little vent there. And now we're starting to get some battle damage on. Now you can go into these areas and just put a little on where the uh, the scratches are already there. Or if you want to, you can do some almost more sort of freehand uh, battle damage. So just put a couple of very quick and importantly, very thin stripes of paint in there. Don't go mad. Don't make uh, too much contact between your brush and the miniature. Otherwise those lines end up too thick and unrealistic. But if that happens, you can correct it in the next step. After we've done that, we're taking some Flash Gits Yellow and some P3 Menoth White Highlight. As before, we're just starting to highlight towards the bottom of the miniature. This is my own personal preferred style, making sure we've got that really dramatic uh, start to the mini, separating it from the base. With things like the battle damage down here, make sure you're highlighting what looks like the lowest side of it. you kind of got to make a judgment call with all of these things, but rule of thumb, highlight underneath the scar, the damage, the abrasion, whatever it might be that you're, you're painting. So it looks a little bit more 3D than it actually is. On corners like this, I've just done a couple of very small highlights just to help give it a little bit more definition to that shape. 
And then as we go through the miniature, we're just adding in a little extra bit of detail here and there. So here you can see, we're just putting in a couple of very, very fine stripes of battle damage. Now here, your brush control is obviously extremely important and making sure your paint is the right thickness is what's gonna help you out with that. You want paint that's thin enough, you can just pick it up from the palette without it changing the shape of your brush and just easily apply across the miniature. So a little bit of trial and error there for some of you perhaps, but it's worth getting right. With the battle damage you put in earlier on, just come in here and just put a little stripe underneath it again. So again, you'll end up with a 3D effect to that battle damage. Uh, and you'll be able to get something that looks a little bit more impressive than just the odd little brush stroke here and there. Honestly, this makes a massive difference to any model. And it's super easy to do. So there's the yellow for our shock jump dragster. I did said show you two different ways of doing yellow. So that's the airbrush way. Next up, I'll show you how to achieve a yellow that's just as popping as this. Something that's just as noticeable with just a brush. And here we go. This is one of our Blood Angels we're working on as a commission piece at the moment. The client would like some stripes on the helmets. And the first step is getting that Bogrin Brown down. Now, just like before, you will need a couple of coats of this to get a really solid coat of it. You can see it applies relatively well over red with one coat. There is it with two, much, much better. Now we're taking some Flash Gitch Yellow, but this time the ratio is different. We're going two to one, Bogren Brown to Flash Gitch Yellow. We wanna start a much smoother introduction with the, uh, the paintbrush because we can't get that instant set of gradients that you can do with the airbrush. It's gonna take a little bit more work, but it's worth putting the time in. So we're doing things like the front of his helmet, uh, the top of his little mohawk thing there, and you might need a couple of coats each time to get that down. I think I did two coats with every single part of that to really boost the brightness of it up and get that power behind it. It's already looking quite striking, but we want this to be a eye-popping yellow, and so of course adding in another highlight. This time we've got one to two Bogren Brown to Flash Gitch Yellow. We started off what, two to one, now we're going one to two. We're gradually increasing the amount of yellow in this to ensure that we get something that is a really, really bright yellow by the end of it. And this is by no means the finished result, but again, you could stop here if you wanted to. But we're definitely gonna push this much further. Add in a couple of coats where you need it, make sure you're working on the brightest areas in a very smooth fashion. Add a little bit more water to your paint if you need to, to ensure you get that smooth application of paint. And then once all of that is done, we're going on with the Flash Gitch Yellow. This is completely by itself, nothing added into it apart from water just to help keep it thin and retain those nice smooth sets of brush strokes that we want. And again, go on with a couple of coats if you need to. There's nothing worse than some sort of blobby paint going on. And you can see when we do his mohawk here at the top, we're just brushing towards the front of it, trying to keep those brush strokes always going in the right direction. And now it's really, really looking yellow. We've got a lot of power behind this now, but we're nowhere near as close to finished as we want to be. With things like the sides, uh, we're just bringing in the highlights in a little bit shorter every single time to help establish that gradient a little bit more. And uh, even I can't ignore the Mohawk now. Uh, apologies about this. I, uh, this is how I know I need to cut the Mohawk. It gets in the way of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys. So there's it with the flash gets yellow down. Similarly to how we did the uh, dragster, now we need to start getting some orange in the recesses. Now we thin this down to a glaze. Best thing to do here is to thin it down, only put a small amount in your brush, and every time you've done a little bit of glazing, either let it dry naturally or grab your hobby hairdryer if you've got one, give it a quick blast with that. I think I did five or six coats with the glaze. We haven't shown them all here, but you can start to see how that orange is building up in the recess there, and that's giving a lot of vibrancy to what we've got. You're gonna end up with something that, as we've said many times now in the course of this video, is gonna really, really pop out it's going to stand out all the way from the side of the table and on a large enough surface all the way from the other side of the tournament hall. So once all your glazes are down and you're happy with just how uh, bright your recesses are and how vivid they are, take some Menoth White Highlight from P3, mix that one to one with your Flash Gitch Yellow and hit all of those edges. So here, we're just coming in around his mohawk. When we get down to the front of his helmet, we're gonna do the line across the visor, and then we'll just have the slightest uptick to help bring that all in, and look at that. That is a very powerful, very vivid yellow, all done by brush. None of that was difficult. Thanks for watching, guys. If you've got any questions, 
put them in the comments. If you've got anything you'd like to see in future videos, put that in the comments. If you've got feedback, again, leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell button so you can see more content from me and hopefully we'll see you in the streams. Peace out, everyone.